I know. Need seven more. Berger, number 15. Kurt Fitzpatrick, head coach. Jack Whining, number 33. Zach Boyd, number 12. Coach Fitzpatrick, would uh, you mind giving him opening statement? Uh, yes. Uh, very proud of our team today. Uh, unbelievable performance. This is probably the best we've played all year long. Picked a great time to do it. Uh, all three phases of the game. Uh, I thought our defensive front, we knew that was the key to the game for us. Um, Jack could probably speak more on it in a little bit, but um, I don't think our defense, they didn't like the feeling coming off last week and the narrative that we can't play defense. Um, and that was a chip on our shoulder all week long. And um, we knew we had to play great up front. Randolph Macon's a great rushing team. Um, and we it, first and foremost, we had to stop the run. And I thought our defensive front played outstanding. Our game plan, Coach Cushing um, called a great game on D, great game plan. Um, I don't think David Wallace had a catch all day today. Um, he's a tremendous player, and just like I just feel like we played the best defense we've played all year. Um, and because of that, we were able to get the ball in good, great field position, um, and our offense really capitalized. And um, I don't think we've turned the ball over today at all. Um, <clears throat> so, just pr just very proud of our overall. Just very proud of our team. Um, you know, it's it's just surreal, honestly. Um, but very proud of our effort. Um, great crowd. Thankful for all the all the fans that, that came down from Cortland. Uh, we've been on a bus a long time in the last two weeks, <laughs> and uh, you know, for all the people to travel and support us is outstanding. Um, I know there's many people across the country who were tuned in and excited, and we're proud to represent you and um, wear red, Cortland red. Yeah, we, we, we talked this morning at breakfast that we had to start quick, you know. Um, Hopkins last week fell down 21 to three. Um, the way that Randolph Megan can run the ball, you ha we had to start fast. Um, I didn't look in detail, but I don't think they trailed all year maybe. Maybe seven to three against Christopher Newport was like the only time they really trailed in a game. And so we wanted to make sure we started fast. Um, I didn't expect to return a punt to go up 14 nothing. You know, you're just trying to play the best you can. All of a sudden, kid, guys made made a big play. But the start, we knew we needed to start fast because we wanted to put pressure on them um, and make them throw and make them pass protect. They're a great rushing team, but we got to try to make them play left-handed a little bit. Um, and we did that. We executed and went, went right down the field and scored. And um, um, I thought that was a huge, huge key to the game to start fast and you know make them try to play offense the way that. The way that we can. Jack, how can you from tweeting and texting and everything else to answer the following question? How can this team give up 36 points in the first half last week alone and then play the type of game you guys played this week 14 to 3? Um, I mean, like Coach said before, we had a really good game plan going in with uh, Coach Coach Cushing, um, defensive coordinator. Um, our offense played outstanding as well. And that always helps us out a lot, all three phases of the game. Um, and you know, we just we just played our game, and that's pretty much it. Just, just played well, executed, and that's all. Uh, this is Chris Berger by Eagle Sports Radio. I'm with Ethan Brandt from D3Football.com. Um, you know, I, I just wanted to zoom out a little bit and look at the entire playoff run. Uh, it's 13 to three. You guys lose to Missouri by 14 to five. As the offense, we, we play well, but I'm around these guys every day, and this is something that I'm used to. Like, we're used to doing this. Like, round one and round two, we didn't play our best, and uh, we really wanted to get back on track. We've been averaging, I think, 40-some points a game, so, like, getting back to that is, like, it feels good, but this is what we're used to. This is what we do as an offense, and we had to do it again today. I think we're just overall, we're just playing, playing a little bit better as a team. And 
honestly, I was very, personally, I was disappointed with the way I played in the first two rounds. I didn't think that I played my best football. I thought I was being a little bit careless, trying to do a little bit too much. Um, so you got to look yourself in the mirror sometimes and just say, get your ball to the playmakers. You know, and um, me and Fitz, we, we, we talk every week. We have a great game plan every week. So personally, for me, it was just don't do too much. Just let the game come to you. Um, you know, I believe in my skill. I believe in my teammates. And I definitely believe in this defense. Um, so I just wanted to put them in great situations, put our team in some great situations. And the first two rounds, we didn't really do that. Um, and we just had to adjust. And, you know, we just you know, played our played a pretty good game today. So it was, uh, it was good to get back on track. When you talk about getting the ball to your playmakers, does it feel like every time you look over the middle, Cole's there? <coughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Basically, you know, Cole's always open. He'll tell you that. Um, so it was it was good. We had a we had a really good game plan. Um, watched a lot of film this week on what they did, and they're very true to what they do. Um, they got a scheme, and they 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 live and die by it. Um, but I just thought that we, with the way we play offense, we can attack them a little bit differently. Um, and that was kind of our mindset. So we just we, we knew what we we had to do coming in, and then you know the first drive, just seeing them come out and playing what they playing what they were playing, it was it was it was go time from there. So you know I always believe in Coach Fitz and. In the place he calls, they got the best play caller in the country, man. So everybody's just basically open. So, you know, I just got to do my job, get get the ball to them, and let them let them make plays. That's just why you're there. I'll add to that, Keith. With when we came out of the Cordica Jug game, we were very banged up on the offensive line specifically. Um, we had some guys, number 66, Jack McGrath, our right guard. He sprained his ankle <coughs> pretty severely in the first drive of the Cordica game. Played the whole rest of that game and could not play the first two rounds. Kevin Whalen, our left tackle. Um, played basically on one leg in Cortica. Um, it's such an emotional game for us, great rivalry game, and those guys gutted it out. And they, we just, we were playing some, you know, we had to use our depth more, especially up front in the first two weeks of the playoffs. Um, and we didn't, I don't think we played great, but, you know, what we talked about after those games, okay, so, you know, the playoffs are a one-game season, right? Everyone talks about that, it's a one-game season. You just got to find a way to win. And then next week, the scoreboard resets, and you got a chance to do it better. I thought defensively, you know, that was the big thing at halftime last week when it was 34 to 34. I was like, okay, all right, we're tied. It's 0 0. Who cares? Flush it and let's just play good from here on out. And, you know, credit to our players and, and coaches that they had the resiliency to, to do that. And I'm proud, for, you know, because that's not, that's not me or that's, not, that's, that's our, whole, our whole program. You know, just at some point, you got to stick your foot in the ground and say, I'm not going anymore. We're going the other way. Um, and we, did a great job of that, and I'm proud of our players for that. Jack, I know you're a coach and somebody that remember, remembers the heyday of New York, New York Division Three college football very well <coughs> through the voice during the Buffalo State and Patriots days. Well, they were in state now, it's a, a long-term thing. Uh, but nobody's come this far in the state of New York since 1989 when New England was the Stag Bowl, and uh, nobody's won it in New York since 1988 when it was the Bowl. How important is it for you personally to kind of rekindle the State football image here in Division Three after the close calls with Rockport and uh, St. John Fisher in the past. That here you are going to the Stag Bowl. Absolutely. Um, I grew up in D three football, you know, so I've been I've been around it a long time. Um, and being at Buff State, you know, um, just the ebbs and the flows. I was so in, I was so engaged in the game. You know, I, that's where I fell in love with football because you never really know. It was any given Saturday, um, and I basically grew up watching all the teams that I'm playing now. You know, going to Hartwick, going to Brockport. Um, so yeah, it is. It's it's very important to me that to, to put New York football on the map. But more importantly, I want to do it for Cortland. I want to have that Cortland across my chest and wear that Cortland red and do it for the the guys that did before us. Um, you know, there's no other spot I'd rather be than this place. Um, there's no other teammates I'd rather have. Um, but to put on for New York and New York high school football too, right? Like we have a lot of our kids are from New York, so we want to kind of show like New York can play football too. You know, we're not just uh, you know, and so. Hopefully, coaches can recognize that, and you know. But I'm just grateful for the position I'm in, and to be able to play with these guys. Can I flip some words together for you, uh, players? Uh, <coughs> Portland is going to the Stag Bowl. How does that make you feel? <laughs> it's crazy, man. It's crazy. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, the feeling of last year being in this exact spot, <coughs> having to get on that that AR bus home, and just knowing that we left so much on the table. Um, it's what we worked for. It's what we talked about all, all, all spring. And the best thing about it is we never really we never really got ahead of ourselves like we did last year. We thought we were world beaters last year and then we got humble real quick. Um, we just stayed the course, man. And I had guys like guys like Jack that just came in and just worked. Um, and, 
been brought a lot to the team. Jack, Jada Martinez, you got Sam Totten coming in as a freshman. Um, you got Cole and JJ, we got a year under their belt. Um, you know, it's 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 an awesome feeling. You know, it's satisfying to be able to work work all you well with how hard you work to finally pay off. Um, but it's surreal, man. It's pretty pretty cool. <coughs> We always knew that, like last year, we lose in quarter play, we, and we come back and we lose here. That we knew that that the losses suck, but we knew it happened for a reason. And then touched their hand, and we, we got back there, and then we had no business losing. And at the end of the game, I remember telling the guys, like, "Hey, something good is gonna come from this. We all knew something good was gonna come from it, and, and here we are again with Chad Bull. But uh, we got to finish the job, and that's all we do." Uh, I don't know. <laughs> We're, I don't know. I haven't had a chance to think about it yet. Um, the bus has been working, though. Hey, that's a, whatever. The bus that's has been working. Or whatever. Straight shot on 81 in this case. Yeah, straight on 81. Um, yeah. Just happy to be playing again. Uh, we'll, do, we'll, we'll walk for after. Um, exactly. Just just glad to, be, glad to be playing. I've been buzzing in Michigan. This is Virginia's nothing, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you.